So, welcome to this session. So, in this session, we are going to discuss about boundary conditions. What are boundary conditions? So, whenever the field is uh, transmitting or uh, traveling from one medium to another medium, what are the conditions which are to be satisfied by the field or called as boundary conditions? Here we have electric field as well as magnetic field. Whenever the electric field is traveling from one medium to another medium, what are the conditions? And uh, whenever the magnetic field is traveling from one medium to another medium, what are the conditions? Exactly at the boundary we require. So, they are called as boundary conditions. Using those boundary conditions, we can get the field in another medium when one medium is known to us. So, here what we do is we will discuss one by one. So, how the field components will vary when it is media traveling from one medium to another medium for different boundaries. So, what are different boundaries we have? So, we may take a dielectric and dielectric boundary that the interface between two dielectric mediums or dielectric and conductor boundary or conductor and free space boundary. These three are the three major boundaries what we consider and for these three uh, boundaries we will derive the conditions for electric field as well as magnetic field. right? So, we will start our discussion with the boundary conditions for electric field between dielectric and dielectric that is the first case what we consider. So, before starting our discussion let us have a small uh, introduction about these boundary conditions how to derive them and what are the equations we are supposed to take. Here clearly remember the Maxwell equations what we have are very very important and the most important equations which are to be considered for deriving the boundary conditions. So, in which form the Maxwell's equations will be considered? So, obviously in the integral form. Already we know the differential form is not suitable whenever there is abrupt change in the medium. Since there is abrupt change in the medium whenever we are considering the boundary, so the point form or the differential form is not at all suitable. So, we are supposed to consider the uh, integral form of our Maxwell's equations that the four Maxwell's equations that what we have are. So, line integral of E d L is equals to 0 that is one of the equations. Next, next a surface integral of d d s is equals to charge enclosed that is from our Gauss law. These two equations will be useful for deriving the boundary conditions of electric fields. And the similar equations that what we have that is surface integral of B d s is equals to 0 that is for uh, magnetic field Gauss law for magnetic field and so line integral of H d l is equals to the total current enclosed that is our ampere's law. These two will be useful for deriving the boundary conditions for magnetic fields. Just what we have to do is we have to apply these equations uh, in related with the boundary. For that what we do is just we will observe how to apply them and how to obtain the boundary conditions initial case for dielectric to dielectric and for electric field component. So, if we know uh, thoroughly how the boundary conditions will be applied for electric field and so in an easiest way we can apply them to the magnetic field also. So, let us take the first case dielectric to dielectric boundary for electric field. Now, let us take this is the boundary that what we have. So, the boundary between two dielectric mediums. Here we are taking the dielectric medium. So, the characteristics of the dielectric medium will be considered with the help of its permittivity. Let us take this is medium 2 has relative permittivity epsilon r 2 and let us take this is medium 1 with relative permittivity epsilon r 1. So, we are assuming two different dielectric mediums with different characteristics and exactly at the boundary what will be the electric field intensity but so we are supposed to enhance uh, analyze that one. For that let us take this is the electric field what we have which is traveling in a second medium. So, for our convenience I will name this one as E 2 that the electric field is traveling or the, or the electric field is existing in our second medium is E 2 and it is crossing the boundary and going to our medium 1. So, what I do is for our convenience I will take the electric field which is in medium 1 as E 1. Now, so E 2 is the electric field in medium 2 and E 1 is the electric field in medium 1. Now, for our convenience and to get the exact relations between uh, the field components, we need to decompose this electric field that E 2 and E 1 as two components that the decomposition will be like this the tangential component to the boundary and the normal component to the boundary. So, what do you mean by tangential component? It is a parallel component to the boundary that here we are supposed to decompose this E 1 and E 2 as tangential component to the boundary along with normal component. So, here what I do is I will decompose this E 2 as tangential component. Let us take this is the tangential component I will name this one as E 2 T that is the tangential component which can be existing in second medium and a normal component to the boundary this is E 2 N. So, here clearly observe 
e 2 t plus e 2 n is equals to e 2 that what we are doing is we are decomposing so initially we are not taking the tangential normal and adding them we are decomposing the electric field intensity which is uh, in medium 2 as tangential component and normal component so here clearly e 2 is decomposed as e 2 t and e 2 n the similarly we have to decompose our e 1 also that the tangential to the surface as e 1 t that this component is e 1 t and the direction is like this and a normal component to the surface that this may be the normal component this is e 1 so, here clearly observe just we are decomposing the electric field what we have as a tangential component and normal component in the second medium, tangential and normal component in the first medium also. The same principle is applicable for remaining all parameters that what we consider for the remaining boundary conditions like the magnetic field also will be decomposed as some tangential normal, electric flux density will be decomposed as tangential normal, magnetic flux density also will be decomposed as tangential and normal. Now, we are supposed to observe. So, among these uh, uh, two and these two that is total four components which one will exist, which one does not exist and which one is continuous, which one is discontinuous like the different different conditions will be there. Now, we are going to analyzing them. So, further just observe this one right. Now, for the analysis of all the field components uh, so at the boundary we are supposed to take two equations as we discussed earlier. So, two, we are supposed to take two equations from the electrostatic fields that they are line integral of EDL is equals to 0 and the surface integral of DDS is equals to the total charge enclosed. So, why what I do is I will take the first equation a line integral of EDL is equals to 0. So, line integral of EDL is equals to 0 is applicable for a closed line that we are supposed to take a closed line and that closed line must follow through the both medium through the boundary. So, for that what I do is I will take a closed path at the boundary for our convenience I will take a closed path which is in the form of some rectangle right and take the direction of this one also this is the path direction that what we have name it as A, B, C, D since it is closed A, A, B, C, D, A that is the closed path what we have and let us take this width is some delta W and the height is delta H. Now, we are supposed to apply our once again our Maxwell's equation line integral of E d L is equals to 0. So, what is that equation? Just you take a closed line integral of E d L is equals to 0 and here what I am doing is I am applying it is a, it in a simplest way. So, do not go for any integrations, do not go for any limits or do not go for any uh, lower limit and upper limit etcetera. Just what I do is I will give you the simplest form of this one line integral of E multiplied with d L. So, if you take this line integral of d L what we will get is the total length. So, what I can say is for the entire closed loop E multiplied with the length is equals to 0 that what I can take. So, so, simply the E that is electric field in this particular direction length direction yes, so multiply them is e, which is equals to 0. This is the simplest equation that what I will take that I will modify I can modify this equation to this form and I will apply uh, that particular equation here. Now, for this entire closed loop apply this equation that what I am doing is from this point to this point I will apply that equation plus B 2 C plus C 2 D plus D 2 A that what I am taking now. Now, consider for path A to B. For path A to B, what is the electric field intensity? Here clearly remember since there is a dot operator, we are supposed to take the electric field intensity in that particular direction only. Just remember like that. That the electric field intensity in the direction of A B, we are supposed to consider. And where this A B is located? This A B is located in medium 1. So, we are supposed to take the electric field component which is in medium 1 and it is in the direction of A B. So, multiply that electric field component with the length of that A B. It is a very simple one. So, consider the electric field component in that particular direction in the medium 1 multiply that one with the length of that uh, path what we are considering. So, the electric field component in this direction may be E 1 T that may not be exact, but approximately the electric field which is along A B is equals to E 1 T. So, consider that equation that 
E one T multiplied with the length of AB. Length of AB is delta W. So multiply that one with delta W. So clearly identify here. So we are calculating E into L for this particular path only. That is, this term is meant for only AB path. Nothing more than that. Plus, next we are supposed to take the electric field multiplied with the length for this BC path. But here clearly observe that BC path is divided as two parts. That if half of the part is in medium one, another half is in medium two. So here clearly what we are doing is we are we are supposed to take half of the path length which is related to the medium one, remaining half of the path length which is related to the medium two. So once again it was decomposed as a two components. Now observe what is the electric field which is meant for this particular path. So this is in medium one, and the electric field in this direction we require. Actually, there is no electric field component which is present in medium one, which is in this direction. But observe, E one n is opposite to this one. So we can consider the electric field intensity opposite to that one, which is in the direction of B C and applicable for medium one. So what I do is the electric field.